not sure. We, we might as well do introductions, I guess. Oh, <laughs> our 52 uh, had a fun game, I guess. All right. Yeah, who wants to go first? I guess I'll go since I'm the one streaming. So, obviously, people that are watching this on my stream know who I am. Uh, my name is Silver, uh, previous actual relevant competitive player. Uh, my name is Chara. I currently play for Climb, which is a top level team right now. And I make content on YouTube, which a good amount of people are probably watching this from here. And I stream on Twitch. And I'm on Twitter at ProChara for both. And I play Rapid and Octobrush. But yeah, that's me. I'm Ice. I play on Starburst, which is a top level Switzerland team. And I play Charger. And my Twitter is at underscore Okay, so the whole purpose of this is we're going to be doing some discussion and predictions for Splatoon 3. Obviously, we don't have a whole lot. The trailer was like less than three minutes, but there's a whole lot that we can gather from it. And then a lot of things that we can, you know, just we're basically just going to be spending most of this time talking about what we felt about it and what we hope that they go in and what we think they'll go in based on what we've seen. So I think the first thing is obviously going to be what did we think of it? And I'm going to start for this one. And uh, I actually did not expect it to actually be Splatoon 3. When I first started, I assumed it was going to be um, a spinoff. Mostly because at that start where it had like after the customization ends and it just goes to like a 2.5D view. I thought it was going to be like a side scroller like shooter and so i did not expect it and then when they actually showed that it was splatoon 3 uh i actually was pretty excited i mean for me i thought it was probably going to be dlc as well i thought it was more just going to be like another octo expansion thing but for salmon run and maybe like having a kind of content update and restart a bit of splatoon 2 content for it but i'm glad it's a sequel i think it's what we kind of need I do want Splatoon 2's lifespan to last a bit longer just because like the meta and the balance of competitive is obviously very good right now, but I think in like a year or so time, it'll be much more time to move on to the next game. So I don't think the release or trailer or any of it could have been timed any better than it has. It's probably the best timing I could have asked for. At first, I didn't think it was Splatoon 3 either. Um, I agree with Char though, like, I still think Splatoon 2 is uh, still has life in it or still has a lifetime in it or not a lifetime uh, a lifespan and like i think that i don't want to see nintendo stop updating splatoon 2 because of splatoon 3 development but i do agree that the release of in a year is actually the most appropriate or makes the most sense to me yeah so i think with giving it like a year out i think that is perfectly uh, appropriate Granted, uh, this is another thing we'll go into a bit later. We also don't have any idea of when it'll actually come out. So that's also a thing that's up in the air. Okay, uh, I'm gonna... People are saying you guys are quiet, so I'm gonna fix that a little bit. <laughs> All right, so... People that are watching, let me know if this sounds a little better. I raised them up quite a bit. But yeah, so I think the, the first thing we're going to be talking about is our speculation based on what we saw. So again, we didn't see a whole ton, but we have enough. We see stuff like the weapons. We saw the bow. We saw what looks like a new version of the Inksuka. We got to see that first map. We got to see quite a bit, actually, for only being like less than three minutes. And I think, I think the first thing we're gonna that I think we're all and there's there's memes about it already. I think the first thing we're gonna expect is every game on launch day is just gonna be the bow. I don't think anyone's <laughs> gonna be playing anything other than the bow on launch day. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, um, I think it's gonna be like Splatoon two duelies all over again. Like day one, everyone was just playing duelies. It's probably gonna be like the same thing, both bow this time. Definitely. Yeah, so it'll I I'm interested to see what the bow will actually be because from the footage of it, it looks like it's gonna function similar enough to like a charger, 
that it it's pretty much just a slayer and doesn't paint because at least from the footage we have and it, it did preface it's not in-game footage but it looked like it just did not paint maybe the actual shots themselves paint but the actual like paint coming out after they fired the bow was like non-existent so i wonder if it's going to be like purely like an aggressive just like slayer weapon that doesn't paint or maybe the painting isn't just like that was just the visual of it and we don't actually that's not the real indication of what its paint will actually be like i mean the bow looks cool but i based on like what we saw even though it's like you said like very short it looks like it has a charge but then it's paint like it looks it shoots multiple shots for starters but it doesn't look like it paints all that much with those multiple shots it looks like it actually paints less than a charger would for example like a charger straight line so i don't know like what that means in terms of like the amount of bullets that it has or how much damage it can do mm -hmm. uh so i've actually looked at like the bow mechanics a lot of it like it's spent a bunch of time just watching back the clips that had the bow in it and it seemed like it's definitely a charger variant it has a ton of things that are similar like the shot's not painting as much in the paint and the uh, like charge having a glow to it which actually you didn't see on the scope chargers but i'll get to that later but it seems to just be in my eyes i think this is going to be the least different type class not that it won't have its uniqueness but i think this is very much going to fall under like yeah it's just a different kind of sniper like i think the shot velocity will be less because it's a bow the shot seems to curve which can give them like different angles that maybe charger can't hit while still having to be accurate it has a multi-shot and it could, seems like it can be vertical or horizontal it can jump and when it jumps it goes like max height which chargers don't have so it's like they have different utility but they're both still snipers it's just that Chargers are more limited, but have more distance and more, like, shot speed, but bows have a lot more actual utility at the mm -hmm. cost of, like, paint and shot speed, and maybe range. And it looked like, at least from the, sh the angle we had, um, it looks like the shots also, like, fall down. Like, the arrows, like, lose lose height and drop in altitude. So you could... I, could, I would expect to see some, like, people trying to go for, like, some trick shots where they're, like, shooting the arrow straight up and watching them fall down and kill someone on the other side of a wall stuff like that yeah that would be interesting to see i definitely think there is some sort of those are like something like that I, i'm definitely interested to see how exactly it's gonna function and then we had um <clears throat> the the new movement tech there the like the roll and squid form and then the like the wall jumping and stuff like that um, I actually saw Chara talking about this on Twitter, and I actually saw people in, in Academy uh, talking about this, specifically in the Brush channel. Stuff like that will actually be super, super helpful for weapons that struggle when it comes to engaging. Weapons yeah. like the Octo Brush, weapons like the Sploosh, anything that has like super short range, that its main problem is engaging on someone, that stuff really helps those kinds of weapons. And I think that's probably what they're aiming for to give some utility to things that really really desperately lack from their kit or the weapon not being designed around that yeah the only concern i would have with it though is i don't know if it's going to be like something that for example like once you do one of those like squid jumps that there's some time before you can do another one or if mm -hmm. it's just going to be something that you can just spam by like pressing a button like for example like a dually roll but you just do that while you're in the ink as an example i'm not sure but i do agree that because even in this game you can see like blasters rollers sploosh even like t-tech sometimes they have a really hard time against midlines in the game and especially moving around blasters and rollers especially where they have no pain so i think that's just an absolute not buff to them but an indirect buff to them as well yeah mm, it seemed like it was designed for that I think the role has like a lot of different designs, so I'm probably gonna go on for this for a bit, but I think one of the main things in terms of Isis' point of mid, like buffing against midlines, while this game is good balance, one of the big problems with it is pure slay heavy short range weapons just get annihilated by mid range weapons. And Nintendo's like tried to make those weapons better, like they've reduced the ending and startup lag of a lot of different weapons, for example, but 
I think the idea of giving different approach and movement options is a great thing to help fix that because it gives the shorter range, like you said, approach tools. I think the other thing it can help is slower weapons, specifically against bombs. Because I think it's kind of just been a reality that we've gone so accustomed to that if you play like a slow weapon, like a range blaster or an explosher or a dynamo, and bombs just destroy you. And they still will be really good against those weapons. But to me, this is like, okay, now you have an option to like, any weapon has a nice option to jump out of the way of a bomb, even if you don't have like full turf on the floor. Like if a range yeah. blaster doesn't have paint on the floor and there's a bomb at its feet, it can't paint and then move out of the way like a T-Tech can. But now, maybe this roll tech has helped with it. And then the other two things I want to note about the roll tech is things we... One thing is speculation, but I think you will likely have to be traveling at full speed to activate this squid roll, because when you do see it used, it's always someone who's already swimming at max speed. So I, I think it's something like that. that you can't do immediately. So I think that might be something. And the second thing is we also know that you can shoot out of it. Which I think gives even more utility for these kind of weapons, because like brushes can then like flick and then start rolling out of it immediately. Brellas can shield out of it. T Tex can like, well, T Tex can just shoot, but obviously it's being able to shoot while executing the roll gives it way more utility because it's not just a movement option. You can use it and shoot. I think it's a good idea that you like pointed out that you can only like use it if you're at full speed. Because while mm -hmm. I do think it's a really great mechanic, I can still see an issue of it becoming where, like, now everything's incredibly hard to hit if otherwise that wasn't the case, if that makes more sense. Yeah, like, especially someone... if it's yeah. not going to, like, consume ink. Because it definitely seems like it's probably not, just because it's everyone's doing it out of ink, so I don't think it's going to consume anything. So it definitely would have to be either be some sort of, like, speed cap that you need to hit in order to do it, or there's a massive cooldown between the uses. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think that just makes the most sense in terms of like balance mm -hmm. because it gives the shorter range weapons mobility to like actually play the game and move, but it also doesn't limit like slower firing weapons like charger, for example, or even the bow from being able to accurately hit shots because they can't spam it. Yeah, I would also like to know like. The squid jump that we see has a very clear downside of lag. Like, when you get in the air, you descend for a long time and you're predictable. I think squid, like, the squid roll is going to have pretty much the exact same thing, where it's like, after that actual jump happens, the descent to the ground is probably, you know, the part they aren't showing is probably a bit slower and predictable, so it can be punished. Like, it gives you a kind of predictable arc. To me, it's just like a weird sideways jump. Like, it's nice for some options, but it's still predictable and punishable once you get used to reading people doing it mm -hmm. i definitely feel like it it seems as if it really is designed at least like the um the jump like the squid jump there it seems as if they saw what people were doing with sub strafing and decided to go screw it let's just make it a thing let's like take this thing that people have found and this like trick that people have found and let's actually incorporate it into the game. Because I think it's it, it it's it's good for what you mentioned, like using it for like getting out of the way of bombs, getting the way out of fire, using it as like an engaged tool. It's definitely I'm interested to see what sort of mechanics and what people can actually do with it. I'm interested to see if some of the stuff will lead to some of these like these tricks that we have found on mass or like you can jump from certain angles at certain speeds or the the infamous rolly or dually rolls where you could like just warp up walls and stuff like that when that was happening yeah i want to see how many if they're going to design the maps around a way where they know like hey people are going to try this so we need to make sure that this sort of collision this sort of things don't exist here or if they just fully embrace it and make it to where like hey these exist but you have to be like super good and you have to be really you know, knowledgeable of this tech to be able to actually get any real good use out of it like that. Yeah. And I think um, the next thing would probably be the the Inkzuka, or what we see, what looks very much like the Inkzuka. I think I haven't looked at the uh, the tweets from NOA or Splatoon JP, but people were telling me that it's already been confirmed that there's some of the stuff that's mixed between uh, Splatoon One and it's been reworked. Um, so it is definitely some variation of the Inkzuka, reworked and redone into something else. And I'm very interested to see what exactly 
this rework does. Because it looks like it is a more focused and skill shot version of the Inkzuka, which I yeah. think is something this game has always really needed, is more skill shot stuff. But we'll have to wait and see. Because I thought, yeah. I thought I from it. what I looked at, it was like a single shot, but it's apparently a multi-shot. Yeah, it has like three bullets that seem to like go around each other, but it also seems to arc, if that makes sense. Because when they showed it in the trailer going across the map, it didn't go in a straight line where you shot it. It would fall off. Mm -hmm. So I think that does... I think that is better because Inkzook and Splatoon 1, although like we can argue at the end game wasn't as good due to the meta, it was still a single fire shot that went really fast and really far. So it was hard for yourself to counter it. But I think this is a good way of like... It's a good rework in my opinion. It looks like it's not better, but more utility and you can be more creative with it as well as like you said we need more skill in this game compared to just mindlessly spamming specials yeah from what i saw from the splatoon jp you shoot like three blasts that explode on impact including if you, you can hit directs with it basically it was just a thing with it as well and those can one shot because we saw it on the range blaster user um one second so i think this is kind of a combination thing because the shots are, I mean, they're not identical to inkjet shots, but they have that kind of property. Like, they're a, more of a blast like an inkjet has. So I wonder mm -hmm. if we're going to start to see more of these combination specials, because the laser things we see, if I'm right, and I've said this a thousand times, but I think the lasers come from the crab, which is a deployable. So if that's what it is, then that makes, or if the rays come from some kind of object, then that's a mix of whale and ray. It targets players, but it's not a control thing, it's something you put down. If that's a combination of stingray and killer whale, and zook is a combination of ink zooka and inkjet, then I think we can expect other Splatoon specials in this game to be oh, yeah. combinations. I don't think all of them will. For example, we know Tenna missiles are in the game from one of the Nintendo of America screenshots that had them in the air. I don't know if that was intended or not, but... So we know, like, for example, Tenna and Echo aren't being combined. Maybe launching the missiles will locate people like an Echo or something, but some specials might be just directly one or the other, and others might be combined. So I think that can lead to just a lot of speculation on Splatoon 3 special ideas before even going into brand new ones. It's like, how are they going to combine existing specials, or are they going to combine them, and are they going to take some from each game? Yeah, I want to see the what they. I really hope they don't add another invincibility to Splatoon. And if they do, I really want it to be how Bubbler was in the first game, where it's more team based than anything. Like, you have to be next to your teammates, you have to be smart when you use it, you can't just panic pop it. And I feel like Splatoon as a whole, invincibilities don't fit as much as they should anymore, I think. I yeah. think. It was something I talked about in Splatoon 1. It, the biggest problem with invincibilities is that their design is basically, it, they're, they're designed as a fail safe and protection for lower level players. In fact, Nogami actually said that in an interview about um, Bubbler, that its design was specifically geared towards players that can't win fights, but want to just keep painting. So they created bubbler so they can keep painting and not have to worry about losing fight the problem is when you design stuff like that you have to account for the fact that it's not it's accessible to everybody and the moment you make that stuff accessible to everyone that stuff's going to get abused and what do you know it got abused and then they tried to dial it back with ink armor but the problem is ink armor it's uh, it's not an invincibility but it affects time to kill and it is essentially the same problem when you well, affect time to kill, it can be abused. Yes, and I think... was also just the case where, like, it was entirely cross map now as well. So I... your teammates just indirectly got a buff from you not even being next to them in the first place. Yeah, I think armor... Like, I, I like the idea of reducing time to kill and being similar to Bubbler. Like, I actually don't think those things are a problem. I think the problem is outside of those two aspects, they basically got rid of the things that Bubbler got right. Like the idea that you had a chain to people, chaining to people, reducing duration, making it more predictable for approaches. Like, even if Bubbler was broken, it had downsides and you had to use it well. Armor chains to literally everyone everywhere at the same time in last six seconds. It's like, 
the amount of depth that Bubbler did have in terms of competitive use was almost completely fucking obliterated with armor. So if we see a combination of that, I think this is the easiest one to do. Have it be the HP thing like armor, but have the chaining mechanic be like Bubbler. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it was also something they did eventually fix at the, the end where they added knockback to Bubbler and Kraken where at the beginning they didn't have that. That was definitely a change they needed to make. Um, but it does make it to where they, those those specials, while, those specials at the start were super oppressive. Um, they became more worthless in a way, in that you could, you know, they, it became a thing of videos of people taming Kraken, just keeping them basically stationary, or people pushing away bubblers off the map and stuff like that. It made it to where there was more counterplay, and so the the fact that they were invincibilities was frustrating, but it became less of a problem as people got better. The problem is, is that ink armor with all the nerfs, it's fundamentally problematic. It is, it should have had something where it should have been AOE based. Like, yeah, it shouldn't have activated cross map. It should be people next to you get the armor or make it to where the farther someone is, the less potent their armor is. Something like that. Its design itself is problematic. And I would hope that they've realized that stuff like that is only going to get abused. If they want to have some way of making it to where like new players can get some sort of assistance, not gonna get like totally shredded, um, they need to find a way that they just need to find a way to actually balance it better than they what they've been doing because it has not been working out. Mm -hmm. I think, well, I think the more we think about it, like, there's definitely options for them to balance things. So I'm not sure if, like, armor is their way of saying short range have an even greater tool for, like, pushing in. But as we saw with this game, armor just made midlines completely able to wall out short range, if anything. It was like the opposite effect that they intended if that was their intention. And I think, I just think honestly, they shouldn't include something like armor or bubbler unless it's incredibly AOE based because like you said, it's just going to naturally get abused even if their intention isn't for that. Because armor right now is a must pick. Every team you see winning either has one armor and in more cases they and not, they have double. Yeah, to me, it's way easier to turn Bubbler into a balanced armor than it is to turn armor into a balanced Bubbler. So in terms of the rework for that, I would rather them just go with the Bubbler path and make it like armor, because I think we're going to get one of those two. But I would just much rather have it, because Bubbler just feels really easy, just like, okay, maybe it has some more activation time, and then it tanks HP like armor. But then other than that, it has the same Bubbler qualities. So, you know bigger hitbox makes it easier to remove the armor it pushes you back still you can see it easily and it'll lose duration depending on who you chain it to it's so easy to just keep everything bubbler has besides the invincibility and instant activation reworking armor is still going to feel too much like armor to me like i think bubbler is just so much better designed that it's like just give it the armor properties besides the invincibility and the armor invincibility and instant activation and you have a really well designed special already but I also think, yeah, I think in terms of armor, I think it helped midlines because it allowed midlines to just be aggressive on backlines and midlines being able to take a backline shot is gonna be way easier against a backline than short lines being, short range weapons being able to take a backline shot. I, I think armor mostly just helps midlines, which is why there's so fucking many of them in comps. Mm hmm And I, I we, we touched on it a bit earlier, I think, the when the duelies were added and the like the the rolls and the dashes i think that's what really contributed to the midline oppression uh is that the a lot of the good midlines are all the things that have movement options and the things that get destroyed are the things that lack any sort of movement option and i think that that's one thing that they are trying to address with this uh squid uh squid jump is they're giving a movement option to everything rather than just a certain class. Yeah, I think that's like my thoughts on those though. I, for Squid Jump, I think there's like nothing to say. We haven't really talked about it, but I don't think there's much to add. It's just 
it's another mix up on the ledge it's predictable so if you miss you're probably dead but if you hit it's a nice option i don't think there's much to say on squid jump besides that it's just a nice different option on the ledge that you have to look out for it's there there's nothing to add i think all right so i think the next thing we can talk a bit about is the map that we saw and in my video where i went over the uh the video or like the trailer itself i mentioned that the ver the map looks very basic in terms of geometry not at all like what we expect where there's a bunch of like uh obstacles and terrain in the way it looked very basic and i think that that is just because it is and i hope very very early in the stage of development yeah yeah i, I don't want to overdo anything with like very like specific movements like ink grills maybe or something like that they just want to keep the game simple for its first release or its first like few weeks of release uh, I mean, I think the stage flows will get more complicated. I think it's just early. Like, you can look at the oh, Reef yeah, in the Splatoon 2 trailer and Urchin in the Splatoon 1 trailer, and they look way simpler. I, I don't know if I want to see stuff like Rails toned down, because I don't think... I think they only really add things, but I do like the geometry being more simple. While we're talking about stage geometry, though, I would love to see stages feel more distinct from each other. Because I feel that was such a huge thing that Splatoon 2 stages lacked. I think Splatoon 2 stage design is the weakest part of the game. And you can look at Splatoon mm -hmm. 1 stage design and think like, oh, fucking Salt Spray sucks or something. And you can look at the bad ones that are really bad. But the good ones are also really good. And even some of the ones you think you hated, you probably look back and think, actually, they're all right. But Splatoon yeah, 2 like... maps are just... <laughs> Splatoon 2 maps are just, wow, all these stages just feel the same. And then mm -hmm. the Splatoon 1 ones they ported all suck because they tried to port the most standard Splatoon 1 stages. And the few stages that are good that they ported, which are Pit and Ancho, were the stages that weren't very simple. Pit was the largest Splatoon 1 map, and Ancho V played around a completely different fan mechanic. It's the unique stages they ported that were the better ones. I'd even say Camp, to some example, is a better Splatoon 1 stage than most of what they ported. Because despite its issues, it's still pretty unique to play on and isn't too bad once people learn how to play on it. It's not great, but at least it's a different type of feel. The Splatoon 2 stages all just feel more or less the same. Yeah, I think a lot of the Splatoon 2 maps suffer from trying to be versions of Splatoon 1 maps. Like we have, like Skipper Pavilion is literally their attempt at having the same thing as Salt Spray Rig, but with a different name. I think that they, they tried so hard to match Splatoon 1's style, but tried to change it enough to where it didn't like, you wouldn't load into Skipper and go, yeah, this is literally, this is literally Salt Spray Rig. But the problem is they tried too hard to mimic the style where it, none of the maps feel particularly special it is literally like a lot of them are just so basic and it's so simplistic design in comparison to what the later splatoon 1 maps were if we think about like uh and you mentioned it like people thinking they don't want maps but then they they'll probably want them back anyway the thing i always saw come up a lot was um crap what was it um Listen. why am i blanking on the no i'm blanking on the name now um Crap. Is it a Splatoon 1 stage that wasn't ported? Museum, Mahi, yeah. Flounder, um, Mahi, Resort. Mahi. Resort. People people hated playing uh, Resort Splat Zones. But you talk to anybody who's a Splatoon 1 vet, and they'll tell you that they're surprised Resort didn't get brought over. Yeah. Like, that, <laughs> that, that map probably could have benefited the most from not being on the Wii U. Like anyone who anyone who played high level Splatoon one can tell you that Mahi suffered from the most frame drops of any map in the entire game. It could benefit the most from not being on the Wii U. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I yeah like, like I remember Anchovy was just a fucking lag fest. You could disconnect people by spamming bomb rush on the fans, but in this game it works completely fine. Yeah. I just was upset because Mahi, it's this. It was a fun looking map, but its design was also really good, even though the stage like changed with like the amount of points the enemy had 
but like Silver mentioned, like it just got blown over by a lag. So if it was on the Switch, I feel like they could have actually made it into like one of the best maps in the game that has to offer. Yeah, what I want to see, because we know they're going to port maps from like the recruitment design thing. We know they're going to bring some maps and they're probably going to change style of it to fit the like Splatoon 3 theme. Or maybe they won't. It'll just be like, ah, here's a visit to Inkopolis for an old fashioned stage or something like that. Mm -hmm. I would like to see them just port some of the more unique Splatoon 1 maps. Because if they port, like, let's say six Splatoon 1 maps, let's say they do, like, six for me. Or eight hours. Then, yeah, God, oh, no. fuck no, please. Uh, we think we could have something like Flounder Heights for the verticality. You could have Mahi for the changing in platforms. You could have Museum for the rotating spinners. You could do Ancho again, which I guess could be from either game, but originally Splatoon 1 for the kind of fan design. Like, there's so many good choices. Even something like Hammerhead or Bluefin would fit for Bluefin's, like, split two and two side. And Hammerhead playing around grates would be really fun for, like, Splatling players. Brushes now can roll on grates. Dooleys can roll on grates. So many more things would fit Hammerhead in this game because they buffed a lot of things to do better on kind of grated surfaces. But then they didn't bring back the great surface map. So, mm -hmm. I think just... Port the other Splatoon 1 maps. Don't do the ones you already ported besides Anchovy. I don't think any of the others should come back. Just port the other Just, ones. <laughs> did anyone anyone else remember how uh, Flounder Heights was in development so long for Splatoon 2 that you could actually hack it into the game? Anyone remember that? Yeah, what I happened do. to that? <laughs> Yeah, and then they ended up not putting it in. I, I'm guessing it's just because it felt too, like, different. But I think that's exactly what this game needs. I don't want Splatoon 3 to feel like the same stages. And for Splatoon mm -hmm. 2, like, I think the same thing. They can port some of the better Splatoon 2 stages, but they're going to still feel similar. Like, okay, maybe Inkblot, Manta, Mako, Sturgeon, Reef. They're going to still feel very samey, but at least it's, like, the better standard stages. So even though there's, like some more standard stages from Splatoon 2 and some more different ones from Splatoon 1, with Splatoon 3 probably feeling different from both. At least they kind of have those categories. Like, okay, a third of the maps are kind of bland and normally, but then the others are very different feeling, which makes the normal feeling maps feel, like, fine. Because it's like, oh, okay, standard is unique now because two-thirds of the other maps in this game aren't standard. So standard mm -hmm. maps are now actually kind of cool. Where in this game, it's like, all right, we have... 15 standard stages, two good stages, and the rest of them are utter dog shit nobody wants to play on. That's Splatoon 2 maps. Alright, so I think now we can get into... We, we already talked a bit about, like, the next thing on our list was changes we want to see. We've already talked quite a bit about that. So I think the next thing would be, what are the things we absolutely hope they don't do? And if... Uh, we And we already touched about a little bit of that. But the, the number one thing I hope they don't do is I hope they don't try to... Uh, I, I don't want to see them try to slowly roll things out again. I don't want to <laughs> see that happen for a third time. Don't I... trickle weapons back to us. Especially don't do what Splatoon did and put launch Splatoon 1 weapons in as DLC. Don't. Just don't do that. I don't want to see that happen again. Yeah, I think Splatoon 2's launch was actually the weakest point of the game. It had nothing to do with balancing. Just the sheer lack of content. Like, Splatoon 1 ending content. Obviously, it was fully finished, but had, like, double the content of Splatoon 1's launch. Or Splatoon mm -hmm. 2's ending. Um, I personally don't see them doing it again, because I think it's probably a lot easier to port over, like, stages and weapons, because they're in Splatoon 2 and it's on the same system. So I'd imagine at least it's probably easier to port things. It's mostly just the things they have to change. But in terms of like main weapons, there's probably not that much they have to do. And also in terms of balance design, I don't think they're gonna change the balance of weapons as much as they are from the transition to Splatoon 1 and 2. And I really hope they don't because there was so many changes when the bulk of things were around kits and specials that it completely fucked the balance in the first year of balance changing was just oh we gotta undo this thing we fucked up about mini mobility let's undo the heavy mobility let's undo the dynamo paint let's undo the h3 rng let's undo a bit of the range rng all that stuff or not range but other blasters that deserve buffs i guess but yeah range has just been untouched yeah but i mean i do agree with that i agree with both points like i really don't want to see them 
trickle stuff out, especially like it's been almost it's been five years. Like by the time Splatoon 2 releases, we know it's 2022. We don't know which month, but it's going to be about five years since Splatoon 2 to Splatoon 3. And I don't want to see them like take a game very slowly and update it very slowly. I feel like if anything they can get more benefit and more out of it by adding updates consistently and regularly to the game. Something I also don't absolutely don't want to see at all, which we talked about what we talked about. I don't want to see any specials that are invincibles or alongside invincibles without having a significant drawback. I feel like mm-hmm. those specials actually ruin the game as we saw. Splatoon 1, it wasn't as bad because quick respawn was a thing in the game. But in Splatoon 2, armor just completely shuts down some classes of weapons, like blasters, rollers, even some shooters. They cannot do much because of armor. Even though it's a time to kill thing, it still acts as a shield for the game, or for the people. So I absolutely don't want to see something like that. The the next thing I hope they don't do, along with no invincibilities, no trickling of content, is I want to... I just... I don't want to see. I just don't want to see res- restricted rotations anymore. Mm-hmm. I think this has sort of outlasted its lifespan. I think the game either needs to move towards like just letting us queue for certain things, or doing the or, or taking the uh, the Call of Duty approach where you choose a mode and then people vote on a map. I think the rotation system. I think that needs to go. I think that this... I I don't even really understand their reasoning behind it. They've tried to explain it being like, oh, that way people can practice specific maps and modes for a prolonged period of time. Yeah, I think that's just BS. I think there was something happening where they they just couldn't do it or didn't want to do it. But I think the the thing I don't want to see the most is I don't want to see the rotation system come back. I'd personally like them to just do the Mario Kart 8 route where it like picks like four or five stages at random and then the people in the lobby vote and then you play a stage. Because not only is like, okay, there's enough random aspect to where every stage can get seen, so it's not just, oh, this is the favorite map out of all 20 for most people, but it also gives data on like, okay, these are the stages people like to play on, these are the stages people hate to play on, when we go to rework a stage because they did a lot of stage reworks now we have info on okay people really don't like playing on this stage let's fix it so that people will want to play on it it both gives option to pick stages and it gives nintendo more info to make their stages better Mm -hmm. um i think another thing that i don't want them to bring back so obviously like specials are a big thing to me because i think Specials are a huge part of what makes this game good or bad because it, this game in both versions have had its mix of great and terrible specials and I think Splatoon 2 is the perfect example of that because some specials like I think Hammer, Booyah Bomb, and Inkjet are some of the best special design not just in Splatoon but in any objective shooter but I also think stuff like Stingray Armor and the Bubble Blower combo are some of the absolute worst in all like objective shooter history. Like, Mm -hmm. I really want them to look at their special design and start to think of how they work. And I think, judging by the fact that Booyah Bomb and Hammer are such good specials and they added them at the end, I think they're learning more of what they should do. And there's also signs like, no Stingray weapons were added after the first six months that shows like, okay, maybe they're learning from it. But this is when we're really going to see it, when they design the next set of specials. Are they going to fix it? Like, if they're going to be HP specials, I want it to be something like Booyah Bomb, where you literally cannot move while you have the armor. Like, that's yeah, part like of why... Yeah, like a significant I... drawback. Yeah, because, like, Baller doesn't have that drawback, and some people think Baller is bad. Those people are delusional. But the I problem with Baller... I think it's just I mean, the pro... Yeah, that's a different argument. But the problem with Baller is, like, in inv- and vulnerability is, like, you get to pop it and then roll the fuck away, and they can't do anything about it 99% of the time. If you panic Booyah Bomb, you're fucking stuck there for a good two seconds before you throw it. Like, yeah, you have armor, but then there's a fuck ton of downsides that are exploitable, which is why people don't mind Booyah as much. Because Booyah's HP done right. 
that mm -hmm. to me is what I want to see. Like, I don't want to see Baller return, even though it's not a... I don't think Baller is a bad design special, but I think it's a type of thing to where I don't want to see it, and Booyah just does that kind of thing so much better. That's the kind of thing I want to see them start to change and rework more specials like that. Hammer is another good example. It doesn't directly, like, it doesn't have HP, it blocks damage, but you can only block damage from a specific angle and a specific time. So there's downsides to it, and there's a ton of different ways you can use it. It has a rush mode, it has a throw mode, you can swing with it, you can jump swing. That's a good example of both a utility special and a simple, like, easy-to-use special with Booyah that are designed right. I want to see more specials with that design. Um, also, I'm fine with Bubble Blower, just to clarify. I don't want the bomb combo in the game. Because Bubble Blower just turns into an absolute panic explosion special the second it has a bomb combo. And I think that's horrible design. Stingray is just not fun to play against at all. I, I don't think it ever will be. And armor is too simple, as we talked about before. I think in terms of specials, it's still really early for us. Like, we don't know, because, like, obviously we saw a bunch of people, or at least in my opinion. I feel like the special balancing, I feel like they can't get it right until we actually start playing the game with all of their mechanics increased and stuff. Because for, like, the crab, sh not the crab shooting lasers, but, like, the Inksuka shot, it looks slow, but it still looks like it has a pretty big hitbox and a pretty big width of where you can die. Um, I feel like the bubble pop thing, that's really annoying as well in Splatoon 2 where they can just panic pop it, where I think Nintendo meant for it to just be you put it in a zone to deny area control. But I feel like special balancing is going to be really hard until we actually get into the game because there could be weapons or mechanics that simply make specials not as good as they appear to be on paper, if that makes any sense. I mean, yeah, but there's a difference between special balance and design. Like, Hammer and Booyah were shit when they started the game, but the core design of the specials was good. They just needed to tweak, like, okay, Booyah needs less armor, Hammer needs to swing a bit faster. Like, yeah, the balance things need to be fixed, but the problem isn't really... Like, when people play the game, the specials will become more balanced, but there's a difference between, like, a balance issue and a design issue. No matter how much they tweak Stingray, it's still a horrible design special, and no amount of balance changes from the buffs before it came out to the nerfs afterward is going to change that. And that's why I'm so worried about special design. Because if they design a shit special and put it in the game, it's stuck in the game forever. There's nothing you can do about it once it's introduced. Mm -hmm. And they've never backpedaled on anything yeah, and like just that. Hate to they've they never would rather taken add out their nerfs and buffs to basically make up for their mistake rather than delete the mistake itself. Yeah. Like, they could have reworked Stingray into Whale. They even put Whale in the game and Stingray looks enough like it. But they would rather keep Ray knowing it's a problem to the point where they completely just only do nerfs, don't attempt to rework it, and don't add it to new weapons because they would rather not backpedal that far. That is my worry. Yeah. And I think specials are just some of the best and worst aspect. If Splatoon 3 had, like, only the good design specials, its potential for being a good competitive game just skyrockets. Because I think the only real bad things with Splatoon 2 balance is Frontliners approaching and special design on three of those specials. That's it! I really think everything else is so fucking good overall. Like, there's minor complaints, but there's really nothing significant. It's those two things that hold it back. And we're already seeing mm -hmm. the Frontline stuff is getting changes, but it's the special stuff I worry about because they've gotten it not where I'd like it to be two games in a row. They need to clean up their special act. Yeah, it is. It's it's also if they keep the way that specials work and that specials are like super prominent and super easy to get, they really cannot afford to mess them up a third time. Something yeah. that has that much influence in the game should not be like super broken and super messed up a third time if they want to keep it as easy to get as it has been. Yeah, I, I don't mind, like, the special output. I think that could be adjusted slightly. Like, I think points for specials was a great mechanic to introduce. I would like the default to be closer to 190 to 200, but it depends on, like, stage design. So I don't mind the special, like, output. I think that's not 
a bad thing, and if you increase it a fuck ton, then I think you just drastically change the game too much. You just make it way slower, and that's why I don't want him to do that. Because specials are such a key point to approaching that it's like, if specials are like 250, 300, defensive phase while you charge specials is going to last years. Nobody wants to watch that, let alone play that. Well, that was something I had talked about in a, a video of mine that I made, that I would be perfectly okay if they made specials in Splatoon 3 be high impact if they took forever to achieve. Like, think of Overwatch's ultimates. It takes a while to build, like, of course, every ultimate in that game has a different, like, generation rate, but the highest impact ults in that game take forever. And yeah. so I think that that would be a good way to do it. It's like, you can have these high impact uh, specials in the game, just make it to where it has to be a long time before you get it. Make yep. it to like, have something come back like Bubbler or Ink Armor, but make it to where everything is like 400p for it. I would be perfectly okay if it took a long time to get to the high impact stuff. I just think that slows down the game a lot. I think the reason it works in Overwatch is because Overwatch has stuff like abilities and the game pace is slower. There's more time, the objectives are slower. So the ultimates being slower and more powerful makes sense in that game. But I don't think it does in this game. Like, I think maybe I think, like, it can work, but I don't think it's the same kind of design. And I would even go as far as to say I prefer Splatoon's more fast-paced gameplay than having to wait a long time for a team fight. If this game was slowed down for special charge, I think it would just make the game have way more downtime and feel slow. Where I think one of this game's best strengths competitively is how little downtime there is. Mm-hmm. So I think the next thing we will want to go into is what are some of the changes we would like to see to weapons? Personally, uh, I would like to see, um, and it's not going to happen, but it's like a pipe dream of mine. I would like to see them revert Autobrush's damage calculation back. I would like to see the damage overlapping return, but maybe reduce its damage or like allow it to happen, but put a hard cap on it, which didn't exist in Splatoon 1. Give it a hard cap, but let it come back, basically. That's my pipe dream. Yeah, as much as I've gotten used to Octobrush in Splatoon 2 and like I still like playing it, I do think Splatoon 1's was better designed because having the potential two shot, but having to be like, okay, but now you have to get closer and you don't paint as far. Because in this game, it's like you paint fine now and your range is actually good. And I think the Tri Slasher has the exact same problem, I'd argue. Which is where I don't like that Tri is an outranging T Tech Slayer machine. Like, if it has to kill faster, like they did with the Fire Rate buff, it should have less range. And I think the same thing for Octobrush. And I'd even say the same for Clash. Like, some kind of. If it's an AoE weapon, I think it needs to be able to work to get in, but it also needs the reward for working to get in. Because right now these weapons, like, Tri is the only one with an actual reward for getting in that, like, benefits it because of the giant hitbox the other two sloshes, like, give the overall main weapon. There's not really a reward for getting super close to Octobrush, with Octobrush or Clash. Clash even goes against it. So I think the design in the first game of Tri and Octobrush of, okay, yeah, you get a really fast time to kill, but you have to really work for that faster time. So do you want to risk having the bigger hitbox and slower kill time or do you want the faster kill that you have to get closer for? I think that just works better. I just want to see a Chargers in the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, it is hard to balance because anything that's a one-shot, one-kill will be seen as broken or unenjoyable. But I don't think it's as bad as it is. And I feel like Chargers right now aren't exactly in a broken state or an unbalanced state. I feel like as of now with but that's also due in part to like armor and stuff. Yeah. But I feel like I'm not sure if I would want a change to chargers. The only difference would be like I would be fine with less paint, I would say. If that means like cuz chargers one shot one kill, but it's painting isn't exact. It's still good for what it is. So, I feel like in terms of changes for at least my main weapon I feel like the best possible combination would be a decently, it's depending on the special, decently high special, maybe like 
200 starting off if it's like specials are like considered to be like the best specials in the game. I feel like it's paint should stay as it is considering the nerfs we've got to paint. Other than that, I feel like most weapons returning, well, Blaster is obviously getting the change that we want. It looks like it has re no RNG at all if it's not reduced. Um, I feel like other than that, I'm pretty fine with weapons the way they are right now. Yeah, going on chargers, I actually wanted to brief. Well, I wanted to talk about chargers as a whole, but briefly, I would want them to make E Leader more like Splat Charger because I think having E Leader be a painting machine is a bad, like, overall thing. It fits this game because E Leader has a kit for zones and it has a niche on zones. But in the other game, when it's going to have a different kit that's good on other modes, it should be more okay, give it a little bit more of its range back, but it paints the same as Splat Charger make them back to being similar to each other. Because if E-Leader is a kit that can work on other modes and has a little bit more range, it'll be broken with the paint it has now. But if they keep the paint it has now and don't give it the range in kits, it's going to be a zones niche again. And E-Leader deserves mm -hmm. to be more than a zones niche, to be honest. My issue with Charger is that I think playing against it in terms of having to approach isn't fun in this game. In the first game, I think it was all right, but that also made Charger not fun because the kills you got were so low value because Splatoon 1 was overran by QR that activated regardless of getting a kill. Splatoon 2's counterplay is either, okay, I will approach the Charger when I press the armor button, which isn't fun for the Charger because then they hit three shots on armored opponents and get nothing from it, or, oh, they have a Charger. Guess I don't approach and farm the armor which isn't fun either. So I think right now the problem is the play for Charger isn't fun for either side. They need to make approaching and moving Charger more dynamic in my opinion. For example, I had an idea for a Splatoon 3 special where like say you hop into like some kind of hovercraft outside of like you can't be shot at and you shoot propulsion shots that knock people away. You don't deal damage, but you could displace them but you still have to like aim and hit people with them. So this is now like, okay, if we want to approach the charger, I have to hit these shots and it will displace them, meaning the charger could still potentially hit shots, but it's harder. And on top of that, it's like more of a dynamic is what I'm trying to get with that. Obviously that's like a, not a perfect design, but it's moving the charger isn't free now. Armor is a free way to approach charger. I think special should be an opportunity but it shouldn't completely invalidate Charger. I well, think it should be more dynamic. Though, like, if we look at, like I said, like Squid Jump and stuff, it's gonna put a lot more pressure on Chargers to have increased aim. And we still don't know this. We've only saw, like, I want to say two specials. Did we see any more from the trailer? Three. That's outside of Inkzuka. No. Three. We just saw the Inkzuka and then uh, what missiles alluded to missiles. And uh, yeah, so the there, there so might three. be, like, specials that just completely block somebody from like shooting at you or like basically like a better splash wall or something because i armor like i agree with you that since arm if armor is not in the game charger can hit people for free now as long as they have a good shot i still feel as if though that it's still too early to tell and i don't think charger is as big of an impact as per se in terms of like how difficult it is to approach or counter, it's not on the same level as armor, and I don't even think it's like somewhat close because I still think you could combat Charger with like knowing where to position, not giving them sight lines, because that's like the downfall of Charger. You can't exactly push up and hit shots if the enemy just isn't giving you shots. Mm -hmm. But I do agree. I think there needs to be some sort of, if there's not mechanics on the stage, some sort of special or like sub abilities that can block a charger from basically sitting in one spot the entire game and you can't move them out of that spot yeah something like that that's just my opinion is to make it more dynamic between it and i also yeah. think that would help the problem of well other backlines can't play against charger because they get shit on like splatlings and x flow and every mode that is in zones because it can't hide behind the zone and paint it stuff like that i think would be helpful as well but i'm still think chargers will be fine in the next game I'm looking forward to seeing how they change them. I just hope they make the interaction between specials and charger more dynamic because I think that's yeah, the like main I don't want to see the only way to move a charger out is with a special. Yeah, I don't mind missiles as much because missiles barely moves charger and it's for like a second. 
And if you use yeah. them on the charger, you lose value because you're only using them on the charger and not the other people. So in terms of, like, missile in Splatoon 3, I think there's enough dynamicness to where, yeah, I'm fine with missiles. And missiles aren't going to kill as much because of the squid roll. So I'm like, Splatoon, missiles, great special for Splatoon 3. No problem with that. But I want more specials that can interact with chargers without being like that, basically. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's my only real thoughts on that. I think the the next thing we could talk about is what we think the game absolutely needs. Not even something like pertaining to specials or anything. Anything outside of that we think the game absolutely needs. And everyone's going to immediately say something like dedicated servers, which I think is like a, a given. People want dedicated servers. They want the netcode to be different. But something that the game definitively needs. And... I, I've already touched on, like, the idea that I want is I need the... I would like the map rotation system to be gone. The dedicated servers would be nice. A higher tick rate would be nice. Um, I think one thing the game could do that would be very beneficial, at least in my opinion, is go the route that Smash started doing, where they incorporate an in-game tournament feature. If the game starts to lean a little bit more into giving the people that are trying to play more seriously what they want, which they've already started doing in Splatoon 2 by adding spectators, I think that would that would go a long way to just sort of slightly inch in the direction of giving us the things that we wanted and better enhancing the user like the user um, experience, the viewer experience, give us some sort of way of creating tournaments in the game. Give us a way of like modifying uh, certain elements of private battles a bit more. Allow us to change the rules of the game so that people that want to do certain things like custom games can change it to where like, oh, I want to play, you know, hide and seek, but the on oh, the Rainmaker version of the map, but I want to make it 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you could do stuff like that. I think one thing, that, the thing I'd like to see the most is I want them to improve the usability and the functionality of the private game. I want them to add more stuff for us to choose and to edit and to work off of than just the game's exact own rules, but we play when we want. I want them to expand on it and allow us to actually customize things. I completely agree. I think that a resource in game to make tournaments is what we need. I don't, if I'm being honest, I don't think there's anything we need. I do have some things that I have a higher priority. A higher tick rate is just something I think should be a given because Splatoon 1 has a higher tick rate than Splatoon 2. So a few things just to list. Higher tick rate, more private battle options. For God's sakes, let us change the host or go back without having to kill the entire room because one person DC'd. For fuck's sake, it would go such a long way. I, I fucking can't with it. Uh, basic things like skipping news, no rotations. Uh, I would like more of a tournament mode, but I think a good way to do it is to just incorporate the league system, but have like a league finder. Like maybe you can search for specific weapons and then form a league team with random people, not people you have to add. Like you could find someone mm -hmm. and send a request or just have league searches like this rank requirement, play this weapon and then search, and then mm -hmm. people can join those lobbies, and then you can then have a way for people entirely in-game to be able to team up with each other, which is basically how you start people playing together or going to competitive. Having a function that'll actually create teams that can be used for that league battle is so much better than, all right, you can league if you have friends. If you don't have friends, oh well, good luck. I guess you're just not doing league battles. Yeah, just like an add an LFG looking for group section in the game. Yeah, I mean, you could even do it on the League page. Like, you could just do recruit for League or find for League. Like, you could literally have it be on the same kind of interface, just add it as an option. It, it improved the game so much. Oh, also, mm -hmm. I almost forgot. Uh, rank system, please. Fucking fix yes. it. Yes, better, better. Go, go back. Go back to Splatoon 1 rank. <laughs> I don't please. care. I... I don't care about the people that cried on Reddit about not being able to rank up. Splatoon 2's rank system is way too much of a like a babysitter. It babies people way too much, and it's not a good. It's. 
a super, super flawed system with the way that it functions. Even like a friend of mine, like I just, I was talking with a coworker the other day. Um, he has casually played Splatoon. Um, he doesn't do anything competitive. He's not like serious in the game. But even he was like, yeah, when I got Splatoon 2, its rank system just sort of felt like all I had to do was just keep playing and I was guaranteed to go up. That's yeah. literally it. If you just keep playing, you're guaranteed to go up. Or even if they And that's keep, not how it should be. Even if they want to keep, like, the the rank X system, just make the rank X system the whole ranks. And please just, if you're going to do that, at the very least, Nintendo, have an option to wait longer for closer lobby power games. Just have it be an option I can select. I will wait. Mm -hmm. Other people don't have to wait, but let me choose to wait to get better matches at the very least, because I will do that wait, and I know a lot of other people will do that kind of wait. And that way, people who want fast games can still do fast games. So at the very least, for a simple solution, I would like them to do that. I, and then I think um, in my chat, Ron makes a good point. Allow, allow us to have a separate uh, mode or a separate competitive mode, a separate rank system where we can gain ranks in team like not like have league as it is where you can play like no pressure versions of the ranked modes but give us a team rank where we can go in and start at like c minus again but you're playing quads and then you rank up as a quad and stuff like that like have a separate ranked mode for team play where you can go in and you actually guaranteed to get matches of your skill level Rather than going into league and you sometimes just get a, a 1700 power lobby and you know the other team is just a bunch of B minus players that just got the game. Yeah. Um, I guess just anything else to add that I didn't, that we didn't mention so far, just kind of any topic. I just personally, my hopes for the game is that it will be a kind of combination of Splatoon 1 and 2, and I want to see them really work on their design for things like specials and movement. And it looks like that's where we're going, but that's my main thoughts about what I want to see from the game from a competitive standpoint, is I just want to see more focus on that kind of thing. I'm overall still really looking forward to this game, and I think what we have seen so far is a very good showing. Having missiles and the new Inkzuka both look like really well-designed specials, the new movement mechanics feel perfect, the new balance things like blasters having no RNG looks great. Like, the little bit we have seen is a really good sign. I just hope they continue to go that path. Mm -hmm. Stick to their guns that they're showing us. Yes. Like, don't backpedal on these things. If you're going to show us this stuff, stick to it. Exactly. And oh. I think that's a very appropriate thing. Just, like, just if you're going to go this route, like, all in. No fear. Just go straight into it. Yeah. And then I think... One of the last things we can end on is, do we think it's going to get a test fire? Yeah, I think and I a think, test fire. <laughs> I think if there are people out there that are doubting a test fire, I don't know why you would. It's literally, like, the easiest promotion for the game. It, like, there's literally no downside to them doing it, other than, like, the data mining that was happening in Splatoon 2's test fire. But, like, it, it's, so, it's such free promotion... Anytime Splatoon uh, 1 or 2 has ever had an event, like a Splatfest or anything, it gets a ton of viewers on Twitch. It is such free promotion that I'd be baffled if they didn't do it. Yeah, I, I even think we'll get a test fire at the end of this year. I think we're going to get a test fire at the end of this year. I think we'll be able to try a little taste of Splatoon 3 by the end of this year. And I expect to hear more oh. news by E3. Not a lot, yeah. but a bit. I expect E3 is probably where they will announce if they're going to do a test fire, regardless of if it happens this year or next. E3 is probably when we're going to see another trailer, and then that is when they'll probably tell us, like, yeah, and there'll be a global test fire happening 2021 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think test fire is just 100% we'll get it. It's just we don't know when we'll get it. And then if you guys had to guess... When is Splatoon 3 launching? My guess would be is that they stick to the July formula and just release it at the either the start of summer or the end of summer 2022. 
Uh, my guess is that I think they want to get it out as soon as possible because I think the game is already delayed, but that's like a theory I talked about before. I expect it'll probably be closer to Splatoon 1's launch date at early summer because I think summer is already the kind of like, yeah, they release Splatoon games in the summer by now, but I think it'll be closer to the end of May, early June would be my guess. Yeah, I think is, I think they will release it early May, end of June. But then again, I just hope that they release it as soon as possible in 2022. I think the safest bet would definitely be early summer or mid-summer, because that's usually where they had those games released, or Splatoon 2 released there, and then Splatoon 1 was early summer. So I think that's just the bullseye of where they're going to release it. All right. All right. And then, everything. let's see here. The last thing... Yeah, that was that was actually pretty much it. So, I, I I guess the last thing would be, so far, just based off what little we know, what little we've seen, how are you guys feeling about Splatoon 3? I am beyond looking forward to it. I'm really hopeful for it. I still have my concerns, but my overall thing is that this could easily be the game that really lets the competitive scene shine and overall lets the game grow in a western audience i really hope it is i think that they i think that the it really is a case of the third time's the charm this is literally their moment to to show that they have finally gotten their stuff figured out sorted out and have something to truly show and this is their moment to actually finally do it and so there there's definitely some uh, for good reason, there's some concern, but I think that this is now more than ever their moment to actually show us that we shouldn't be concerned, and they have to show us. Yeah, they have to come in. They have to like knock it out of the park. Otherwise, they're just gonna lose faith from the people that have been playing since the first game, and we're looking to have that experience back. Yeah, I hope a good amount of the Splatoon One experience is recreated. I haven't talked about it, but just kind of. I don't know, the pace of that, the feel of that game is different. I just hope to have some of it back in this game, and I think we will. So that's my hope, that this game will be the merger of what makes both games great and will excel it from two already good competitive and casual shooters to a really great one. I hope mm -hmm. Splatoon 3 is the masterpiece. Yeah, I mean... I, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece, but it definitely has to be better than Splatoon 2. Yeah. If they want to really get people to be really, it's like really care about it again, they have to do it right this time. All right. Yeah, so I want to uh, thanks both of you for joining me. This was uh, definitely an interesting uh, experience. Also, Ice and I just had an amazing comeback. But... <laughs> But this was, this was, this was good. I think there probably won't. Uh, maybe I'll try to get you guys to come back when we're closer to release, and there's like a good. Uh, we know a good bit of the game actually by that point. Yeah, um, I would be down. But to I'm do, definitely. Hmm? I would be down to do more discussions whenever we get info next and discuss that Same. stuff. I think that would totally be great. I think that will that one any sort of like if we get like an actual direct focus around the game we get more information that time we can finally just focus solely on what we've seen because by that point hopefully we'll have enough knowledge of the game where we won't have to really rely on predictions and we'll have a general idea of how it's actually going to play and then of course past like the test fire we can do another one about how we feel about the test fire yeah all right but all right so thank you two for showing up and thanks for chilling here with me for a bit thanks and then for, i want yeah and uh for the people that are watching my stream uh both chara and i will be uploading this as well so if people showed up late um you can tune into the videos mine will probably be up tomorrow um i don't know about chara's but mine tomorrow will likely be on my youtube yeah, mine will be tomorrow or the day after, just depends how long I take to edit out little, like more downtime bits of it and stuff. Just have a bit of editing, mm -hmm. but should be out in two days at the latest. Yeah, and then hopefully it won't be too much longer. Uh, E3 is in a couple months, so maybe we'll hear more then. Uh, hopefully we'll have some sort of announcement, even if it's not the release date, because I think the release date, it probably won't even announce until 2022. 
maybe we'll get some sort of confirmation of a test fire. I just or want just more info. <laughs> Yeah, literally anything. I think at this point, literally anything else would suffice. Mm -hmm. And so then I'll yeah. be anxiously waiting for more Splatoon news. Exactly. I'm definitely... I'm excited to see where they go. I'm definitely excited to see if they can recapture the feeling of Splatoon 1. Because I had talked with um, people from SRL, and one of the biggest problems that SRL had was that the, everyone kind of collectively felt like the game was not uh, not an evolution. A lot of people felt that Splatoon 2 was more of a step backwards, and it it was in a lot of regards. We talked about like the tick rate going down, uh, the servers or not the lack thereof, the net code taking a step down, things like that. It felt like the game was taking a step backwards, and a lot of them and a lot of people I know feel that way about the game and so hopefully they can uh recapture the hearts of the people that they lost with this game yeah definitely Hope so. i've got to go right now though but thanks for having me it was really fun and i'd be down to do this again in the future when we get more information gotcha have a good yeah one. see ya ice see ya all right well yeah. uh i think that's about all so i'll probably wrap up uh thank you so much for having me on here and yeah, it was yeah. a good discussion. Thank you.